All right, with part six, right now I'm looking at uh, a model that my students created of a place called Stonehenge. It's actually the Clark Memorial Fountain, but the students refer to it as Stonehenge. They did a nice job. Um, we decided not to try to model the entire campus in Second Life. It just wasn't practical, and we didn't really know why we would want to do that anyway. Uh, our purpose was not to um, market the campus. It was to do to get some proof of concept ideas. Um, here, uh, one of my other students um, did a very sophisticated uh, game, a basketball game, and uh, even created a nice little video that explains how it works. Welcome to the island of Sofia at the University of Notre Dame. Today I will be showing you a Second Life basketball game that I developed in the fall semester of 2007. Here you see the sign for the basketball game which tells us to so um, did a wonderful little tutorial let's see if I can remember how this works okay. so you need to attach the ball to yourself and then you need to shoot it and of course here are the directions you need to shoot it toward the basket and the basket would actually keep track of whether you uh, made shots. And uh, it needs to be reset at this point, but it worked pretty well. I won't show you that right now because we actually have a video of how that worked. So these are two very nice little projects that, that students did uh, at different times. And I'm going to take us out of midnight. There we go. This is a mock-up, another mock-up. Um, that one of the students did. This was done actually last year. And this is a, uh, a classroom that now exists, um, room B013, B011, in uh, this building. And we have a, a mock up that we created in another program called Unity 3D. Um, this particular model um, took less time to create, right? And, uh, but it's just not as uh, good. You can actually see the B011 mock-up on the web uh, that was done in uh, Unity 3D. Um, but the student did it, again, did a nice job here. This really does look like the room. I feel like uh, I'm a little too tall in here, but the room does have relatively low ceilings. It's a, it's a wonderful classroom. things we offered on our island was a sandbox and I would often see people uh, using it. The sandbox was a place where anyone could come and build things in Second Life, right? And uh, so I could, for example, uh, build an object just to sort of show you what it looks like. There's the little box, right? I can, uh, I can edit it. Examples to sort of show you how this all works, right? I can change the color. Right. I can name the object and save it. And do all kinds of interesting things. So anyone could come in and do that. Now, they can't build anywhere on the island, just in this designated location. They also provided some free resources for people if they came in. They, there are uh, some scripts. There's some uh, different, our idea, one of our ideas was signs. We wanted signs that would be sort of generic, kind of like icons on a web page. That never caught on in Second Life. But you can see there's um, buildings, textures, all kinds of free stuff that you could use, um, uh, people could just take. Um, there's also some scripts that I wrote um, using the uh, uh, Linden scripting programming language that works in uh, Second Life. So there's a lot of capability of doing fairly sophisticated things here, as you can see that we did some of that. 